to my uh, Kenix IoT open source stack uh, presentation. Um, by this presentation, I try to convince you of uh, some business opportunities that are possibly awaiting for you. So I have actually, um, well, my, my content or the agenda is very short, just two items actually. <clears throat> so I will give a, a demo. Um, I call it, so the first one is demo A, and that will be uh, an, an, uh, a demo where I will commission two devices, two uh, virtual IoT devices, by means of a tool called uh, IoT Linker, which is provided to me by member company uh, Cascoda. Um, then um, in the second part, I will give a demonstration or a demo uh, called a demo B, and that will be actually basically the same but then done by, uh, by using ETH6. ETH6, obviously, the commissioning tool uh, um, as, it, as, as it is offered uh, by KNX Association. However, this is, of course, not the officially released version. It's, of course, a demo, uh, a, a, a beta version, better said, that, that, we, that is uh, just as a preparation for, uh, for whenever we will be able to release um, IoT uh, devices for real. Okay, um, maybe a bit more details on, on the demo. So demo A here. So as I said, indeed, it will be about uh, two KNX IoT virtual devices. Uh, this is uh, what I call or what we call the second generation uh, because in the first generation, we didn't have security. Now we have security. And this is exactly what I want to show to you. Some security um, let's say related um, aspects that I want to uh, yeah demonstrate uh, because it's an that makes it really another yeah another uh, game let's say um, so what is the base of these uh, KNX IoT virtual devices very uh, important I think that is uh, well that it is indeed that these two devices that I will demonstrate um, are actually based on the so-called KNX IoT open source stack, right? And the commissioning tool, as I already mentioned, is a tool um, provided to me by, um, by Cascoda, uh, so called the IoT linker. And um, well, we should see this as this demo also see as a kind of proof of concept because I will be using, well, to, to prove that, that, that this is indeed a working concept, I will use uh, as a proof uh, there uh, Wireshark to show you. Look, uh, it's all standard, standardized. It's all st based on, on on standardized technology like OSCOR and and so on. Uh, so I will be able to record stuff. I will be able to decrypt and uh, and and do some further an analysis on the data that is then eventually uh, decrypted. In the demo B, I will do something similar or actually, yeah, something very similar actually. So it's, I will do again the same demo, but then using actually ETS-6, yeah. So also to show you, to prove to you that um, 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 we don't depend only on the, we don't, we don't depend on the, on the tool from Cascoda, but we also have this, um, um, our own tool, uh, ETS-6, that is under preparation. So that also this work is going on. And, uh, and you will see that, yes, also there, exactly the same thing will happen. We will be able to, um, yeah, do some recording, some decryption, and some anal analysis based on Wireshark. So, uh, again, proof of concept there. Uh, well, so far, already, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, um, and then I can uh, start really uh, making this demo. Please uh, give me a moment to prepare myself. Uh, I need to uh, start up some tools here, and uh, but it will not take too long. Um, so I close the PowerPoint. I basically don't need this anymore. So uh, just hang on, please. So, um, 
what do we see on the screen now? Maybe I start here with the virtual devices. So again, as I said in the present, in the in the introduction, these are uh, two devices um, that have been developed based on the open stack, right? Um, the term virtual is maybe not entirely correct because it's it's not actually uh, these are not virtual devices; they are actually real devices. The only thing that is uh, yeah, virtual here is, is their user interface or their app application level, if you want, uh, for, the, for the push button. I can say that indeed these are not real push buttons because I kind of emulate them by means of uh, yeah, uh, clickable buttons on, on, a, on a window screen. And for the actuator, I um, yeah, virtualize or emulate uh, the, the, the relays by means of a, yeah, a simple checkbox. Uh, but as such, it's a real device because a Windows PC, a Windows platform, is um, by definition an, an, uh, an IoT platform. So uh, that makes it actually uh, real. Um, okay, um, what we see here is already pre-configured devices that have been uh, a configuration that comes from another exper experiment of mine. So first step that I need to do and, uh, in, in each demo is to um, bring these devices back to their X factory uh, status. So how do you do that? Well, very easy. There is this uh, menu in the, in the file uh, that is specifically serving, ser uh, serving that purpose. Sorry. Uh, so I do that here, reset X factory. And then everything is really, yeah, uh, put to, yeah, basically to zero. Um, same here for the activator. So reset to X factory. So you see here in the details that um, the device has a serial number. It has a QR uh, code uh, that is uh, also right here in the, in the user interface, which I can then copy and paste into uh, the context wherever I would need that, obviously in ETS uh, and or other tools. Uh, individual address uh, that we know from also the classic devices, indeed set to zero. Um, installation identifier, so that is an, an extra field that we will see in IoT devices uh, compared to the classic devices. Uh, load state, unloaded, programming mode switched off for the time being, and uh, and other things. Uh, same for the um, 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 uh, switching activator. So also everything set to zero. Of course, it's a different uh, QR code here because it's it's another device. It also has also another serial number. Um, obviously. Um, so, okay, I have now those two devices being set to the X factory reset. So, uh, I am actually basically in a position now to um, do something with these devices using this uh, KNX IoT linker tool from, um, yeah, from Cascoda, as I said uh, already before, even twice, I think. Um, so, what, what is so typical about uh, IoT devices is I can discover them. They can tell me on the medium what kind of device they are, what kind of functional blocks that they have on board. That's what they uh, are able to do. But this will go in several steps. Again, because I put them back to, uh, um, yeah, to X factory state, I'll, um, I have to do uh, some, some, some extra things, like I have to uh, introduce somehow I uh, have to enter somehow uh, in the IoT linker at least some information from the devices so that it can really discover them. What is that information? Well, I have to uh, provide the IoT linker uh, the QR codes of the of the two devices, and by that um, the next step can uh, can take place. So let's start there. So I'll uh, need to first of all um, enter the QR code of the first device. So I do that um, by using this field here. So I copy it into that uh, field. And then I click just this button, add QR info. And then uh, we see reaction on the right side of the tool. And it tells me that uh, yeah, something happened and it looks uh, OK. So it was understood by the tool. I have a serial number. I have a password. The password can, by the way, be checked uh, against the user interface here. And then you're sure, okay, it did indeed recognize my device. So uh, password, 
mentioned here, is indeed the same as uh, this one. So this is actually uh, quite convenient because you can learn from this tool when, whenever you would make your device, then you could already try it here, right? And then, and then you know what you should, uh, what, what is there to expect actually. Okay, let's do this same thing for the second device. Uh, so also here we have this uh, QR code, so which we can uh, copy into this field and then click again that button. And then the same thing happens. We can do yet another check. Is this indeed the password of uh, this device being mentioned in the user face? And yes, it is, we have a match. So, okay, fine. The, 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 the tool is now able to uh, talk to the devices um, and uh, well, the, the talking means in this case, uh, well, uh, next step in the conversation is, uh, the discovery of the devices. Um, let's see if that indeed is uh, is is happening. So how do I do that? Um, how do I discover? Well, simple. I just click on the discover devices button uh, and then see what happens. I have to wait a little bit and then nothing happens. So I try again. Maybe I'm using the the wrong linker here. That could be. Uh, so I have to. I'm afraid I have to stop here uh, this experiment. Um, So just give me a moment. So I hope everything is better uh, uh, in this version. Just a moment. I just repeat whatever I uh, the, the things I have done before. I repeat, but more quick, a bit more quicker than of course. Uh, so entering the QR information. Okay. Okay, so let's try again, discovering them. No, this is definitely not working. Maybe I even using the wrong devices, sorry. Just give me a minute, please. Okay, I 
I guess I, maybe I should start with the second demo. Um, I have the impression that although I have tested before that uh, I might be using the wrong virtual devices. Uh, so therefore I uh, maybe skip this demo, maybe come back to it later. Uh, so, okay. So I start again by setting them to the X factory state, okay. And try again with ETS. Um, so here in ETS, um, I have, um, so what happened here is actually I made for the, for the two virtual devices that, uh, that we had on the screen uh, just before. So uh, yeah, th these devices, um, I made a, a product uh, database so that uh, ETS, uh, so that I can import them in ETS and so that I can use them in ETS. And that, that I, of course, can also link the objects together by means of the group addresses. So as we are used to do for classic devices. So that is actually something that did not change. Um, so, um, but I also did already as a preparation. Uh, so in order to save a bit of time is I already um, entered the QR codes into um, ETS. So by means of the, um, the security tab here. So I have, uh, that is where I have entered uh, that information. Um, so that's already done. And um, so as such, I, I made a simple configuration here. So I, I basically uh, linked um, a couple of objects uh, together. So um, uh, in order to have two switching functions, so to say, uh, just operated by means of yeah, push buttons. And uh, the next step for me is just to yeah try to commission uh, the devices because the function uh, is already there. Okay, so in that in that regard, I'll just need to um, how to say uh, try to link to the to the uh, to the interface and see what happens. So if I download the devices. Then, um, yeah, okay. Also here, ETS seems to fail. And I think that I know why I fail because one basic condition is not met here. I don't have internet on this PC. Uh, and that's why, okay, this explains a lot. Uh, so I'm trying to get a, 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 an internet connection here. Um, so if some, mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's just a matter of uh, connecting the device to a switch somewhere. I am. Uh, I'm actually in a in a room here where um, I um, need to still find out how to be connected to internet. So just please uh, give me a moment.
Okay. Um, so, okay, I have, uh, I have the impression that I have internet on this computer now. So let's just start again. Let's try again uh, by using the IoT linker. So I put the devices back to, um, uh, to the uh, factory, X factory status and uh, try all over again. Okay. So. First step is uh, entering the QR information. Then try the discovery. And now we have a better result. So now I am indeed able to discover devices. Um, so, okay. Since I'm able to discover them, I can now go to the next step. I can really enroll the devices because that's, so after discovery, we need to enroll. Enroll means um, that the tool knows how to decrypt the telegrams coming uh, or the, the, the frames, better said, that come from uh, the devices. Uh, so that's an absolute uh, yeah, necessary step. Uh, so it has to do with uh, yeah, security. So I have to enroll one by one. So there is a specific, so if I do, if I click, if I uh, select the device in the list here of the discovered devices, then I, by means of the right click, I get to the context menu and I can uh, choose enroll device. And then I see immediately that indeed um, I get information back from the device. It tells me which uh, functional blocks it has on board. So. Uh, beginning with the serial number of device, I can identify indeed the the, um, the, yeah, the device ending with the serial number 700 being the switching actuator. And I can tell that it has uh, four times 417 um, functional block on board, which is a, which is a, a switching uh, functional block. Okay, fine. Let's go to the next device and do the same thing. So I also enroll this device. And then I should see indeed, and it is also uh, clearly happening here, I see for this sensor uh, device, the, the, the functional blocks that are on board. So I see four times 421. Now, what I could do is, um, so basically I am now in a position to create a function or functions out of that. So for the sake of the demo, I will just keep it very simple. So I will just uh, link uh, channel one to channel one and see uh, what happens. Because that is definitely what I have. I don't have anything right now. So that would definitely be a point where I can show you, look, uh, we have a working function. Um, okay, so simple. I just select what I want in the function. Uh, function is, by the way, um, created here on this uh, in this area here so um, there is a floor zero room zero and a function zero i'm go just going to keep the the default stuff here just for the sake of the demo you can do uh, when when you play with this tool you do of course whatever you want um and um yeah so next step is just to uh, keep the the functional blocks that i want in the function selected and then i do a right click and simply indeed confirm, okay, add it to the function. And then you can see indeed in the, in the area here, functions, that uh, I have the functional blocks there. So simple, next step is just to make sure that this, uh, this function that I have created is, um, 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 how to say, um, yeah, commissioned into the devices. So how do I do that? Well, first of all, I need to, let's say, create the function uh, um, in, 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 in um, yeah, uh, I have to 
kind of serialize it on, on, the, on the computer here. So I just make the necessary files. And then I will transfer whatever's in the files into the memory of the devices. So it's a bit uh, two-step uh, approach here. So I'll uh, create the functions and uh, download them. Actually, I did that in one step, but it, it are by it, it, but it are indeed two steps uh, in, in the actual uh, action. Okay, um, let's see if this is now somehow working in the device. What I can see immediately on the devices is that indeed they have now an individual address because it was 000, if you remember. Uh, now it's 002, and also the installation identifier has been set to um, to a value because it was zero. This is hexadecimal, so the installation identifier is actually 1616. Uh, uh, the de this device is still in programming mode for some reason, I don't know. Uh, I can switch that off, no problem. Uh, the load state is loaded, uh, and same here for the other device. So basically, I expect a working function here. So let's try. Uh, no, apparently not, but I have already a bit of experience with this tool, so I know that this can happen. It's not really a big issue. Um, yeah, okay, this version of the IoT linker is maybe not perfect, but it's also a tool under development, so uh, as such, this is not so not so dramatic um, so the only thing that that i need to do here is to um, uh, yeah, make sure to uh, program the devices uh, just explicitly uh, how can i do that just select them from the list use the context menu and just click download full uh, and then you're sure the the device is, is commissioned again uh, i'll do that for the other device as well And then we'll try again. And this time I can see that uh, I have a full operational function because I have indeed, um, as I said, I have, um, so the, the, the relay has been uh, emulated by means of a simple checkbox. And uh, yeah, I just can check and uncheck it by clicking uh, this button here. Also the feedback, by the way, is so that's actually the other way around so i had the checkbox is then of course in the push button but this is also uh checked and unchecked uh, accordingly now um as i said uh proof of concept is actually to use wireshark and to see uh what's going on there um so i'll start the wireshark software which is uh in case you don't know it's just a free uh, freeware software based on standardized technology, of course, something that we didn't develop as KNX Association. Um, so it's something completely independent, in case you didn't know that, yeah, I'm just saying. Um, so basically what I am doing here is that, uh, yeah, I need to connect the Wireshark software to the, to the, to the medium I'm using. This is, uh, in this case, uh, Ethernet, of course. And then I have already um, put here, a because I will now see any IP frame appearing that's on this, uh, on this medium here. And uh, of course, I don't want all protocols. I just want one specific one. And what is the specific one that I am using here? Well, it's called OSCOR. Um, so that is uh, what we need to use in IoT devices according to the specifications. So uh, it's here on the top. I just need to select it and activate it. And then you see, I see nothing anymore, right? Uh, because indeed I'm not doing ASCOR, uh, ASCOR or score uh, for the time being. I'll do that by clicking this button. So let's try. And then indeed I see uh, two the telegrams appearing here. One is indeed for the, for the, for the let's say for the switching off, uh, on of the, or off of course. Uh, so that means I'm sending in uh, a frame from the push button to the actuator. And then the second one is the, the feedback, of course. So that is the other uh, direction. Um, now, okay, um, you can also clearly see, uh, immediately see in the user interface of, 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 of Wireshark that I have here some issue. Uh, the Wireshark is not able to decrypt the information. Um, well, okay, that's quite normal because 
yeah, I should inform, just like I had to inform uh, the linker uh, about the QR code, I have to do, or the password, better said, the, 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 the master secret it's called. Um, I have to do the same thing for this Wireshark so that it can indeed, just like IoT linker, in, uh, decrypt the messages. So how do you do that? You just right click on this yellow uh, thing here and you, and you just select protocol preferences, security contexts. And then, uh, yeah, this is here from a, from a previous test. I could just delete that and add the line again. And the information that I need here is right here in the device. So I just uh, go to the, to the so-called um, yeah, address table or authentication table and the information is there. So regarding the, um, the group addresses, so I have two identifiers. So the AA20 and the AA21, uh, and then also the, the, the master secret that goes uh, with that. So let's try. So uh, the first thing that I need to copy here or to set is the, oh, sorry, that went wrong. Mm, security context. Um, so I delete that line again because I'm not sure if it's really the, the right one. So I, I rather remove it and try to enter here uh, the AA20. Uh, oh, sorry, wrong, 20, yes. Recipient ID is the same because it works in two directions. And then the master secret, okay, I'll do a copy paste from, um, from here. No, sorry, that was wrong. I'll take it from the from the activator. So AA20 has this as secret or as password. There you go. Okay. Confirm. And then you see immediately reaction in the tool. It uh, it can is now able to decrypt the, the 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 frame, and it can give me more information. So it tells me ah this is a concise binary object representation or short CBOR, and there we go again uh, CBOR. We can go one step further, uh, but I'm going to maybe skip that step for now because I think that the CBOR encoding will not make any uh, not so much sense to you uh, in, in, in this demo, but you can take my word for it, for, uh, on it. Uh, if you take the specifications, then you can really uh, decode the CBOR uh, information here. Yeah. So there is a, yeah, it's a kind of, um, um, yeah, JSON-based structure. Uh, but again, I, 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 I'm, I'm not going into all these details here. It's maybe not the time and the, and the place to do that. But uh, I just wanted to make my point and I think I did that by saying this is indeed proof of concept. I have here standardized technology that is able to do to uh, um, um, yeah, decrypt all, all, this, uh, all this information. Now, okay, maybe um, just quick, uh, I will go into the next demo uh, just to show you that also ETS is doing actually the same thing. Yeah? Um, that's maybe also interesting to see. Um, so. As I said, I'll, um, in order to yeah, go to another tool, I will create another context. So I need to um, set the devices back to their X factory uh, state. So let's do that. X factory state, fine. And then an ETS. So it, I already briefly in, uh, um, yeah, introduced it to you. So um, what I have here is indeed a representation of those two devices in ETS so that I can use their uh, the objects and, and, uh, and in order to link them by means of group addresses. And by that, I create then uh, uh, yeah, functions. So uh, basically, I have here created, if I um, check closely, uh, I basically have created here a function where the push button channel one is uh, operating upon channel three of the switching actuator. So a bit different function, which is maybe a good example in this case. 
Uh, so let's see if, if I can get it working. Uh, The devices have been set to their X factory uh, status already. So basically what I try to do now is to get uh, um, a link to the medium and voila, it's there. Uh, I see the KNX IoT medium being there. So I select that interface uh, that gives me access to that medium. And then I should be able to uh, commission these devices. As I said also, uh, as I already said before, I um, I already enrolled the devices here in ETS. Um, maybe to repeat it, uh, because it's an important step we should not forget. Um, I need to do that by means of the security tab. So I need to enter here those uh, that information. And then indeed the, the ETS, ETS is able to um, 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 enroll the devices. Um, Maybe one other extra thing that I want to tell to you to make it clear that um, that ET ETS is actually not able or not yet able to discover the devices. That is indeed a feature that ETS that we still need to implement, but we can learn from the linker. So thanks, thanks to Cascoda, we can learn from their tool how we have to do that in, in ETS. But you can be sure, you can be sure of course, uh, one day we will see ETS having that feature. Of course, but right now I don't have it here, so that's also why I'm not uh, showing it to you. So, okay, let's now uh, finalize the demo by trying to commission the devices and see if I have uh, um, 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 something working there. So, how do you do that? Simple, select the device and just select download all. I have to um, put the device in programming mode. So I have to be careful here because I have, it's only two devices, but I need to select the right one. So the switching actuator, I shall bring it, bring it in um, programming mode. So that is here, the switching uh, actuator. And I do that by, again, via the file menu. And there is a specific um, item there that allows me to bring the device in programming mode and then the magic should happen and the magic indeed just happened. Okay, that's just one device. Let's try it for the other as well. Download, download all. Programming button. This time I should do that for the push button. So same thing, file, programming mode, and then the magic should happen. Um, what is also nice in ETS is I at least already have a monitor. So I can now really monitor on the medium what happens, just like Wireshark. So, um, so let's try that. So I, just, I start the monitor and see if indeed, first of all, the function that I wanted works. And if I get indeed information about the exchange of information uh, um, um, uh, on the medium, if I can see that in the ETS monitor. Let's try it. So if I'm not mistaken, ah, yes, okay, something, yes. I thought it was uh, button number three, but it seems to be button number four, okay. Uh, but I have a working function, all right. So I see something um, toggling in the interface of the switching actuator, right? So I see here the, the checkbox going from uh, check to unchecked and and so on. And in this, in the same time, I see here indeed in the background in ETS, um, yeah, um, telegrams appearing or frames appearing in the monitor. Um, so it tells me indeed that, um, yeah, I'm, I'm basically using an, an on off function. Um, I could even um, trigger uh, the function from within ETS. So let's try that. So if I take the switching actuator um, and if I enter here, uh, I should have both actually, so it's going to be a bit small, but let's try. Um, if I put here the, the one, one, three, this one, 
And if I set here the value to, yeah, screen's a bit too small. Let's try anyway. So it's now switched off. So let's try to switch it on. Uh, where is the button to, yeah, okay. Let's try, right. Yes, and indeed that also works. So it uh, was a bit, bit difficult situation because of my screen here, a bit small, but in the end we saw that it worked. And of course, um, Wireshark uh, is also still uh, there to give us proof of the, of the, of the concept. Um, so also here when I uh, toggle uh, the function, I get here indeed, um, how to say, I get the frames also to see in, in Wireshark. But of course, uh, I, I can also see that immediately that Wireshark is indeed right now not able to um, decrypt the messages because it's indeed another context. IoT Linker created its own specific key for, uh, for the devices in order to, to decrypt the, 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 the frames. But now it's another tool, so it's another key. So therefore, I have to um yeah do do that again so to say um so specifically for ets uh, so uh, i'll need to um yeah use the the credentials again um just a moment so the group address that i have been using is the 013 so I should actually basically use the 259 apparently as, as identifier. Yeah, it's, all, it's all very specific when, when it comes to security, you know. So maybe I remove this one, remove and then, yep. And the master key is right here. Okay. Okay, something went wrong here. Maybe it's for this telegram. I'm not too sure why why this is, um, but okay. That's that's now a detail. I'm not going to try to find it out during this demo, uh, but you can take my word on it. Um, this also works for ETS. I probably selected the wrong um, 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 uh, group address, uh, but it also works for ETS. Um, I basically think I can um, enter the demo here. So again. As I already uh, said before, thank you very much for your attention.